Hi, this is Epic M Studios, and today I'm going to be showing you how noise can create terrain. So this is a program I've made um, in Java that creates this sort of terrain using noise. Now I'm not going to be covering texturing, that's uh, fairly simple. All you do for texturing is find the normal of uh, the geometry, and you find how much the Z direction is sticking out from 0 to 1. And so that would tell you how vertically the normal is pointing or how flat the surface is. Using that information, you can texture the terrain differently. For example, flatter surfaces with Z values closer to 1 for the normals are going to be this grass, and other ones are going to be the more rocky textures. But I won't be covering that. I'm going to be covering the noise generation, the actual terrain, and how you can take random noise and create something like this from it. So I'll be demonstrating this in GIMP. Let's get out of open broadcasting software. So what you always start with is noise, but it depends how you sample it. This is the noise I've sampled. And if you look at it, it's just, it's random. And there's nothing else to say. But it can be turned into terrain pretty easily. So what I did is I sampled these four pixels from the bottom. All right, These four pixels look like this. They look like this. But they would usually have hard edges. So what I did, I applied a Gaussian blur to them. And so that made it very smooth and so that the pixels fade into each other. I did the exact same, except instead of doing a 2x2 two two area, did a 4x4 four four area. This goes in powers of 2. And then I add these in some proportion. In this case, it's um, adding half of this to the first one. All right, And I did the same, but sampling 8x8, 16x16, 32x32, 64, until I get to 128x128, which is the end image. So the way this works, if you think about it, this first selection of noise, right here, I'm adding the third one. This first one is kind of setting what the large details in the land will be. So from far away, if you look at the land, it will mostly look like this. But then this second one, kind of, it's a little bit smaller details. And the third one, yet even smaller. Fourth one gets smaller. The fifth one gets into smaller detail, all the way to the sixth and the seventh. And so these, when these combine, you can't notice the seams that there were before with the first one. Like you can notice right here, you can detect the pixels, even the second and the third. But as you get more and more uh, noise piled on, that changes because there's more randomness. And as soon as you get so much randomness, it's not really going to be visible. So I'm going to show you how to do this in Java. Uh, the code is already written, but it's fairly simple for anybody who can understand code very, pretty well. So the first step is to generate your noise. This is a type of noise function right here uh, that I used in my Java program. That When taken in an int, an integer, it returns a value. And every time it takes in the same integer, say I say 4, the integer 4, it will spit out the same value. And this is a float from 0 to 1. This is an, is an example of doing it with two dimensions, so an x and a y coordinate. Um, it's pretty similar. And then there's a function to interpolate. Interpolation functions are interesting. There's different types of them. Linear interpolation, like in math, is just a linear function. It takes two points, the two points that you've sampled, and it interpolates linear, linearly between them meaning it creates a sort of linear graph between them. So if you're half the distance to one and the other, you're actually at the average of the two values. Cosine interpolation is a bit different. Instead of going linearly, it actually kind of eases into both of them. So this creates a better looking noise. And it's actually closer to what this is. So this is more of an easing noise. It's not linear. Do not want to open Visual Studio. Let's just wait for that to load. 
But anyway, so what I first do is I create smooth noise. Now, smooth noise isn't, it, it, it's kind of this first noise, but it's smoothed out a little bit. Not really. It just uses averages, um, a little bit different ver form of an average, uh, to make noise that is smoothed out. Then there's the interpolated noise function. And this takes in two floats, by the way, the uh, x and the y coordinate. All right. So that's basically just our starter noise before we interpolate it. And it's a step up from just random noise. Interpolated noise actually uses the interpolation functions. So we take in smooth noise and we interpolate them in two dimensions to make that easing effect seen here. And so this is what would come out of the interpolated noise function. Then there's the Perlin function. And the way it works is it basically does what this layering does. So I've created a loop and there's going to be an addition going on in the loop. So you, you're going to have to understand these three vocabulary terms. Um, so this is the total, but it's the total height of one point, right? And persistence. Persistence is sort of the ratio of the different layers that are going to be added. So this to this, all right? You have 100%, then you have about 49.8. So let's call that 50%. So this is being added in a 1 to 2 ratio. So that would be 0.5 persistence because you're adding 0.5 of the next one. And this one about 25, and this one even less. So this would be a 0.5 persistence value. This one I have it at 0.4 because I feel that looks better. Again, this is more of an artistic preference thing. Um, but also, if you're looking at real terrain, uh, 0.4 works pretty well. And then you have your number of octaves. Now think of the octaves as the amount of layers you have. So this would be one. This would be an octave. Um, again, you can't see it very well. But all of these combine. All these octaves combine to form the total noise. So we have eight octaves, right? That means we have eight repetitions we're going to add. So again, this is a loop. It loops from uh, zero to seven. So it loops eight times. It does the thing eight times. And what we do, we have to get a frequency. And that frequency is basically just going to be how far in our noise function we sample from. So really, if you had a small frequency, you're going to be sampling points from this noise function that are right next to each other. That may be good for when you have an octave such as this one, number seven, that has very small noise, but not good for this one, number one. So what this does is it creates frequencies based on the octave number. And a higher frequency value is actually going to be further apart because we're, again, sampling noise from different positions. Um, so that's how that works. Then there's amplitude. Amplitude is sort of acting as this uh, opacity amount. So it's basically telling us how much to add to it. And so that is the persistence to the power of i. So 0, when it starts at 0... Anything to the zeroth power is going to be 1. And then, if we have 1, it's going to be 0.4, and so on. So then what we do, we get our signal. And so this is the noise that's going to come out. So this is interpolated noise of the x-coordinate times the frequency, and the y-coordinate times the frequency. So if you get x-coordinates that are far apart, that means that the frequency is high, the frequency value is high. Um, and you're sampling something like this. So points that are very far apart. Then what we do is I actually take the signal and I change it a little bit for the hybrid multifractal, but um, we'll just stick with this. All right. So then we multiply that by the amplitude. So we take the interpolated noise, we multiply it by the amplitude, and we add that to the total. So it's additive. 
So what we're taking here, we're taking this, all right, taking this noise, we're adding this to it. And as you keep adding, you keep getting more details. That's what this is doing in Java. It's combining all these different octaves worth of noise into one at different proportions. And then we can get something that looks like this. Let me change the octaves. First, let me make sure I'm using the correct noise uh, function for it. Okay, Perlin noise. Yep. So, if we change the octaves to say zero, well, actually that won't work. That'll just be flat because we don't have any octaves to add. But let's change it to one. All right. And let's run the program. This is very boring. Actually, let's see octave zero. I might have might have messed up there. Okay, yeah, octave zero is just flat. Then we'll take octave one. Now, octave one is this very flat or very not very detailed sort of landmass that is kind of setting the baseline of what everything's gonna look like. Because if you remembered from before, the train kind of followed this. It looked like this. Really? So this is what it would be like from far away. Alright? Then, let's say, two octaves. Again, we're compounding another layer of noise onto it. This should be a little bit more detailed. And as you can see, we do have some more details um, that are clearly visible by the different textures. Third octave. gets even more detailed in the noise. Now, I'm just going to skip to the fifth octave because the fourth octave will be kind of the same. And so now you can see we have even more details in our terrain. Let's go all the way to the seventh octave. And you can see we have details, but it's not there really. It's not at the whole detailed, really detailed terrain. You can still see some, you, you can still see that it looks really computer generated. Right, that's where the eighth octave comes in, and that's the sort of the smallest value. And if we see that, take a look, we can see we get this. So this is a lot more detailed. It's by almost two. Um, factor two more detailed. So, thank you for watching my video. Um, I hope you gained some better understanding, at least uh, the concepts of noise functions. This is a very basic one. Um, for land masses, it works decently. There's other better noise functions you can research. It's a very interesting subject field. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this and uh, have fun programming, doing whatever with your noise. Uh, have a nice day or night whenever you're watching this. Goodbye.